Windows Server 2019 System Administration. Welcome back everybody. I'm Prakash Vidhan, your trainer for this entire series. This is the part three of our virtualization. In previous two, day, uh, in previous two videos, we have already seen clearly the meaning of this hypervisor. Okay, what are the types of your hard disks? What are the types of your, you know, uh, switches and all? What are the types of disks, the format of disks, the entire prerequisite in order to install your virtual operating system we have clearly discussed in our previous two videos. So if you have missed those two videos, so I suggest you please go through that so that now from now onwards we are going to install the virtual machine, we are going to install the operating system and we are going to learn the complete virtualization environment in Windows Server 2019. So in order to install your virtual operating system, uh, we do have two options actually. Number one, you can install this virtualization in your client family operating system as well. That means as a feature of your Windows 10 operating system itself. Of course, it can be done in other client operating system as well. But for instance, for example, I have used my Windows 10 operating system. And number two, we can also install this virtualization in server family operating system as well. Of course, it is meant for the server, but the Microsoft has provided us with the platform as a feature in Windows client operating system as well, through which you can install the virtual operating system and where the servers can be installed and complete virtualization can be done even using the client family operating system. So now I'm going to show you first how to, how to install the Hyper-V okay as a your hypervisor platform in order to install the server family operating system so that you can continue your further training for the your virtualization so let me take you to the feature where your virtualization can be installed that means the your hyper v okay so let's go to the control panel and then i'm going to show you how to add the feature okay for the your virtual machine turn on windows feature or from here and you'll notice that hypervisor feature is over here see if you install hypervisor or i mean to say hyper v from the client operating system it will be under your your feature actually whereas if you install hyper v of windows server 2019 that can be seen under the rule not in a feature this is the one major difference okay so i'm going to use it from the client operating system and there we'll continue okay so these are the things i'm going to install the tool and the platform and all so let's install it then you'll find at the bottom where the hyper-v will be shown okay so let's wait for a few seconds so that it gets installed the hyper-v and then we'll continue rest of our practical implementation of the virtual license It might take few more minutes in my system so don't worry i'm gonna pause the video okay and i'll continue after it gets installed Okay, I don't think I need to pause the video even. So it's been already installed, so almost done. So let's not pause or so let's continue from here so that it saves my end as well as your time as well, okay? And you also need to see how it looks by the time it installed. Now, the feature has been installed already, okay? Now it is asking you, this computer must be restarted now before we finish the installation uh, as a feature of your Hyper-V in a client family operating system. So I hope, you understood now i need to pause the video so that we'll meet after the system is restarted okay welcome back everybody now the system has been restarted so after my computer has been restarted if you notice over here you see the hyper v is listed over here okay this is the hyper v manager in your client family operating system for which you don't have to have a server on it in order to install operating system in a hyper v it can be used in a client family operating system as well so i'm going to click this hyper v manager and you see for the first time the how does this hyper v manager looks like in your practical scenario now this is your hyper v manager you see this is the freshly installed there is no operating system installed over here now from here only we are going to install the operating system 
and as we have discussed previously before you know previously we have learned in our two videos a part two video we have clearly understood the meaning of your virtual switch virtual hard disk and all so virtual switch and hard disk that can be created from here as well at least one or i mean to say the virtual switch how you create though it can be selected the default virtual switch during the os deployment phase in your hyper v whereas i can show you over here how to create one virtual switch before you install the operating system so that during the operating system installation page you can select that option or the switch okay now let's say new i would like to create virtual machine that will go directly to the creation process of your virtual machine even the hard disk okay but first i would like to go to the hyper v setting here so in a hyper v setting if you go through all these steps you have option for creating a virtual hard disk for creating a virtual machine okay your storage and your mouse keyboard you know your all the options are over here i would like to show you again see here right click if i go to new virtual machine you can import the virtual machine as well you can go to the hyper v setting as well okay whereas our prime concern over here was to create one virtual switch so virtual switch manager okay i'm going to go to virtual switch manager if you remember in our part two video we talk about external switch internal switch private switch so in this case let's create one external switch and i'm not going to use the default switch okay there is option for creating a default switch as well so i'm going to create one external switch so that you you can understand that pc will be able to or that guest operating system will be able to use your internet service as well so let's create and let's give a name okay let's say uh testing you can give any name okay testing uh external switch okay now what do you want to connect this virtual switch to this is the default one okay this one i'm going to use not the virtual that that means i'm to see what okay let's go to this wireless and there is no issue you can choose any of this this is a external one this is my wireless this is my LAN card because see in a LAN, i have not connected the cable so that's why i'm going to use this wireless i guess it would be easy for me to configure as well okay this is not internal not private see these two things we have already discussed in our part two video now apply okay the changes will disturb the network connectivity we have no, no issue on that so let's continue so let it apply the creating of your external one switch so that during the operating system installation phase it's going to ask you which switch you are going to use so i'm going to select this one i repeat again it is not mandatory to you know create right now and it can be done later on even after installing the operating system also switch can be changed but right now as you see in a part two we have already shown we have already discussed the types of the virtual switches so that's why i thought of showing you how to create the at least one virtual switch so similarly there is option for your creating a virtual hard disk also see okay but this can be done even during the os deployment phase also so now let's see how to install the operating system in your Hyper-V manager. For the first time, we're going to install virtual operating system. So please go through the steps. So I'm going to do new virtual machine. Now, next, I don't believe you understand the meaning of all this. Now it's asking you the name of your virtual machine. What name would you like to give? Displaying name. Okay, let's say my first, okay virtual machine you can give in any capital letter or small letter and it is also asking you to choose the folder so i'm going to use the default one see i'm going to use the default location so that's why it's okay next so there are two types number one generation type generation one generation two now generation one supports 32 bit as well as the 64 bit guest operating system okay whereas if i go to number two also it's the same thing Okay, only difference is that the virtual machine generation 2 provides support for newer virtual license feature. UEFI based firmware is there. Okay, now there are some features comparing to the generation 1. So in our case, I guess generation 1 is more than enough. So that's why I'm going to select this one. But if you implement this to generation 2, that would be much better. Okay, so let's go to next. Now it is asking you what amount of RAM would you like to deploy to this guest operating system remember that is the host and the guest host is a main device or the server uh, the device or the machine physical machine that we have discussed in our previous video uh, whose hardware we are going to share so i'm going to share uh, one gb of ram from my hardware next remember switch 
This is the external switch that we have created last time. So if we have not created this one, so we'll be having two one, two options. Number one, do not connect. Number two, connect with the default switch. But for now, for instance, we have created our own external switch. So that's why I suggest you to select this one. In your environment, you can select any you want, okay? Next, now it is asking you, switch is done ram is done how about the hard disk because do you remember from the physical device only the hard disk will be used as a virtualization that means virtualized hard disk will be created so in that virtualized hard disk we are going to install the virtual machine so in order to install the virtual machine i do believe that you need to have a hard disk no matter even at least it's a virtual hard disk so it's asking you out of the total hard disk capacity of your physical machine what amount of hard disks would you like to allocate for this one so let's say uh, i think atgb is more than enough for our environment so i'm going to give atgb and that can be you know extended later on so i'm going to do atgb this is the default location of your hard disk please guys don't forget this is the default location where your hard disk will be created in order to install your operating system. If you like to change it, obviously you can change browse it and give somewhere else the next location. Okay. So ATGB is more than enough. Remember 64 TB. Now it can support about 64 TB. This theoretical portion is detailed explained in our video too. If you have missed out, I again I would like to suggest please go through that. Okay, so re rest of the option we're going to leave it as it is for now. And next one is asking you how would you like to install your operating system? Okay, would you like to install later? Obviously, no, I would like to show you right now only. Would you like to install operating system from your bootable, uh, this CD, DVD? Of course, nowadays people don't use that. So what do you have with that? ISO image file, this is the best option. So browse it, you should have the image of ISO. See, I've got one ISO image of Windows Server 2019. So that's how I'm going to install from here. Okay, open it. This is my image of my server family operating system, Finns. Okay, now it's going to check entire setting that we did just now for the hard disk, okay, your RAM, your pro processor that we have not actually precisely set over here, so that can be done this later on, okay. So now your virtual machine has been created, but it is in office state. That means operating system is selected, but it's not installed yet. So right click and connect. Or you can simply double click also. See, now you can start. Now the operating system installation phase has been started. See, see here, operating system is now started loading the files from that my ISO image. This is the same process, see, same process of installing the operating system that you do in your physical machine. So whatever things it's going to ask you over here in order to install the virtual operating system for the first time in our scenario, same thing will be asked in your physical machine as well. So there's nothing new, no need to be panicked. This is the same thing. See, I'm showing you guys from the zero, from the basic. So that's why you are gonna get some sort of expertise and knowledge after completing this tutorial. So of course, uh, the language, I'm going to use this one. Time currency, if you want to change, you can change it. Otherwise you leave it as it is. Of course the keyboard, we're going to use the format as a US only. So the next one, so I'm not going to re repair because I'm going to install for the first time the virtual operating system. So that's why I'm going to leave as it is and I'm going to click install now. Now the setup has been started. Now it's going to load the, you know, all the required file from that image file before it gets you ready for your first virtual operating system in our environment in Hyper-V Manager. So now these are the four options that we're going to have operating systems. Okay. You do you want to install the standard edition, but don't worry, it will go in core. Don't forget this one. I mean, say that. Okay. Now this one is the desktop version. That means the GUI. I do believe that since you have already started learning all this, implementing, you know, you might be working as a system engineer or this system administrator, you need to understand clearly the meaning of this first standard evolution copy. And the second one is the desktop experience. That means if you choose the first one that will take you to the core. Okay, now it's having only 64 bit in my environment and the second option that you're having the types of operating system, even the type for the type of operating system, I have made the separate video, I guess it was my first or the second video, please go through that. Okay, now I'm going to use the desktop actually, that means I'm going to use GUI. Uh, you know, standard is more than enough for me at, at this moment, so I'm not going to use the data center. Okay, so I'm going to use Windows Server 2019 standard evolution desktop experience. That means the GUI because we don't want to talk about the core at this moment. Of course, for the core, I'm going to make the separate video. Now let's go to next. 
The hard disk that we have created, the virtual hard disk, the size was given as a 80 GB. See, this is for the update. Okay, that means upgrading your operating system. Of course, we're not going to talk about this. We're going to install the fresh one. See, remember, we created 80 GB of hard disk. So I'm going to create. Of course, it's going to reserve some space for your system. And then we'll click next. The operating system will be installed. Okay, so after that, I guess uh, I need to pause the video for some time again because in order to install the operating system in the virtual environment, it's going to take a bit longer time in my, set, my system because I told you, often I used to say I've got many, many, many this virtual machines, I've got maximum resources, so that's why it might take much time. So see, 549 MB is going to be used for your system purpose, rest can be used for installing operating system. So I'm going to do next. Now see, the process of installing the operating system has been started. Okay, now I'm going to pause the video. Now we'll meet when the installation has been successfully done. Then we'll continue the rest of the journey for your ex ex expertise in order to work with the virtual machine. Welcome back everybody. Now the system has been restarted after you know installing the operating system. This is the first virtual machine that we have installed as a your virtual guest operating system. Now as you know after you install the operating system and the system gets started it's going to ask you the first password that you're going to provide as a system admin over here. So I've provided that password after it was restarted now let's continue what it looks like your virtual machine that means your guest operating system after you install in your hypervisor so for that we have user hyper v from the windows server obviously this uh, was actually basically done from the client family operating system but it is the same thing as you do in your server operating system as well so don't forget this hyper v we have installed as a feature of our one of the client operating system now the rest of the work you know making a domain controller okay making your failover your file server your ipam entire things can be done as normal okay as usual as you do in your physical hardware actually it's the same thing so now let's see after this we're going to see how to set the ip address in your virtual machine okay first virtual machine in our case this is a part three of this one and then we'll also see how to promote it into a domain controller and obviously uh, after that in our next series we're going to see how to you know go for the failover of your hyper-v machine as well okay so this is the first login that you can see in our environment so i'm gonna log in so i do believe now you understand it takes time to load your profile it takes time to load your first server this manager that we call ict i do believe you remember that's the initial configuration test so after that i'll take you to the tour of rest of the configuration in your system so it's almost done so let's see now how long it takes it's loading your session manager preparing your windows almost done It soon take much longer. Wait for a few more seconds. It's simply personalizing your settings. Wait for more few more seconds. Okay, congratulations. It's successfully loaded now. This is your first 
your guest operating system that we have installed in our your virtual environment that means your new hypervisor that we have used as a hyper-v of the windows operating system now it's loading your server manager now uh, in between let's go to our network interface card where we can see how to set the ip how we can communicate with the rest of the world and all so right now if you notice we have not installed or we have not typed manually or the static ip in this server so that's why it's going to take the ip from my router that means from the dhcp if you remember last time we have selected our external switch so in that case it's going to obtain an ip from my router itself so if i have to show you the ip configuration of this system at this moment you'll see that its ip is something like this so i need to connect yes because i have used the external switch so it's going to obtain ip from my router itself that is from the wireless so now let's check my ip okay so see now 192.168.1.16 is the IP actually that's been obtained by this device. So if I try to ping to let's say Google, it should be able to reply C because I have used the external switch. Okay. Now let's go to the NIC. Okay, sorry, we have okay. We have already gone to the switch actually. That means the NIC. Now let's create or let's type the IP now first. Okay. So let it complete this first, server manager, it's taking time, no problem. Now, we're gonna close this, server manager I don't need at this moment, I need only the space to configure my IP. So I'm gonna configure my IP over here. Let's go for the static IP rather than going to the dynamic from my DSCP server. So let's create our new server over here. Let's go for this. And since we are going to promote this one as a server, I do believe you understand that because our entire journey is about the domain control and all. So let's do this one. IP is now obtained. Now we'll go to our server manager and we are going to add the rules in order to promote this server as a server or the domain controller itself. So let's pin it over here. You know, in the first boot always it takes time because the maximum these inner you know, contents are not loaded the managers are not loaded so in my case i'm going to simply okay no problem it's loading okay let it load Let's go to server manager. It's taking a bit time over here in my case, no problem. Now, what I'm gonna do, I can copy it and paste it somewhere here so that I can simply click it and I can, you know, execute this one. So let's go to the shortcut only. You can keep it in a task manager as well. Now we'll add the role as if you are doing in a physical machine. This is the same thing, guys, trust me, this is the same thing. Go to manage and add a role and we are going to add a server manager okay it's loading we are going to add activability domain controller role and then we'll promote this server as a domain controller so rest of the, our training will depend on that only so it's loading ict so that's why it's taking time see it's loading still initial booting initial loading it does take time sometime so i hope now it's ready by this time Still it's loading, no problem. Okay, now let's add the role. I don't think these things are new for you because we have already learned in our previous videos. Okay, see, this is the name of our server. Okay, name of this domain PC. So let, let it live as it is uh, because so far we know that uh, name can be copied and paste. So there is nothing to worry. So activity domain services. This we are going to add it in order to promote this one as a domain controller. So it's going to add it the additional tool. This is the same old story that you have done during the process of promoting the server as a domain controller. Okay, now rest all are same. Let it install. Okay, now welcome back once again everyone. Now if you see over here, uh, you know, 
Windows Server Activity Domain Service role has been installed over here. Now we'll continue with the process of promoting this server as a domain controller. Okay, so we are going to create a new forest in our virtualized environment. So that's why we are going to select add a new forest since this is the first login. Okay, after you added the role, so it's going to read the configuration, deploying the configuration. So it takes time, or I mean to say a few more seconds. Then we are going to promote the domain controller over here. It would be kind of your revision for promoting a server as a domain controller comparing to our previous videos. Okay. So let it go to the full deployment configuration information that is going to collect it from here. Okay, we are going to create a new domain. If you remember, we are going to take viatech.com. Okay, viatech.com, no problem. This is the same name we are going to use that we have been using all this long for this entire training series. So, it, okay, now I do believe it's a DNS domain name system for that purpose and we are going to use it and we are going to use it by default let's leave it 2016 there is no problem on this okay and now we are going to continue from here let's give a password for your DSRM There is no delegation at this moment, so the net bias name will be the first part of your domain controller. If you remember, that's a Viatech only. Okay, then next. Rest of the process are same. Your entities, your you know database folder, your log file and all entire things are same. See, database folder is the same location that we have done last time. Log files is the same location, sysfold. That means this is same equal to your physical device actually though we have installed in this virtualized environment but rest of the things are same now it's going to add this install it all the necessity you know components of pro promoting of this server operating system as a domain controller and now it's going to install now i'm going to pause this video since it takes time and it's going to restart your system and we'll meet after the system gets restarted i do believe in this series we're going to do so many restarts so that's why i'm going to pause the video so that it makes your video less compared to the longer time okay okay now our server has been restarted after promoting this server operating system as a domain controller in our hyper v so if i go to my hyper v manager this is a name over here that we have given actually it's a default one now if i go to my first virtual machine right click and connect you see the server has already been promoted in as a domain controller and the entire settings are already done over here and it's been restarted also so let's log in for the first time as an administrator in your first virtual operating system okay let's load it now we are going to log in in a, as a viatech over here if i maximize over here so it's gonna load all the you know configuration that you have done so far to promote it as a domain controller and rest of the things you'll feel that it seems like your physical machine there is nothing new it's a first login as usual you know that it takes time so it's going to load it to your server manager server console is going to load it it's going to load your profile for the first time as administrator of this vitech.com profile so that's why it's going to take few more seconds okay it has successfully started okay now let's go to the server manager over here It's loading server manager. Wait for a few more seconds.
Okay, let's go to tools now. Since the server manager is already loaded, I guess in the dashboard is almost ready. So if I go over here to active directory users and computers, you'll witness that it's been already loaded. It's been already done. That means your domain is promoted first domain in your server. That means the virtual environment. So see now, see your biotech.com is done. Your domain controller is this one. It is already done. So I hope by this time you have already understood that, you know, installing the Hyper-V and installing the operating system in that virtual environment is not so much difficult. So in our next video, we are going to see the rest of the features regarding your Hyper-V. And if you remember, I was also saying last time that when you configure your install your, uh, you know, this Hyper Manager in terms of your Hyper B over here. In our case, if I go to the Server Manager and I go to the Manage Add Roles, you'll find the similar to the uh, client operating system to install the role for your Hyper B. But this time, the last time when we installed it, client operating system that was in a feature, but over here it is inside the role. If you see, see here now, Hyper V. That means inside this server operating system as well we can install the hyper v and we can install the operating system the same way and we did as we did to the your client family operating system i prefer to install in client operating system and in the installer hyper v and we can do rest of the things see it has to be done with the setting with the processor this virtual license so that's why it's showing there this way and we don't have issue, issues over here because we have already installed this hyper v in our client operating system so i do believe that this gives you a bit concept about installing the operating system or the guest operating system inside your host in a server entirely in your virtualization environment. So I do believe there will be many more videos regarding this virtualization in our journey. So if you think it was easy going step by step, you understood, please do like and subscribe. Thank you.